Hello friends and family, I'm Hannah giving you encouragement and godly wisdom with Bible context and life application. So today I will be having a special guest. Her name is Mary Ozaraga and I met her back during the lockdown when everything was closed, the pandemic was a major thing. So I'm excited for you guys to meet Mary and here we go. I need to get up but my soul weighs me down, I'm still free falling when I bit the ground oh. Yeah. I'm not making progress. I've been walking, I've been walking back and forth. Misplaced my purpose. They say the pain is part of growing. I've been wondering how wide will my heart grow before it rips it open. Yeah, I need to get up, but my soul weighs me down I'm still free falling when I hit the ground oh, Tell me where do I go from here? Cause I hear a call on me So on high with wings like eagles, yeah When the storms will roll away And when I'm caught up in the deep I'm holding on to you, believing, yeah That storm was rolled away And I'll see better well, that song was Better Days by Mary Ozaraga, and she is right here with me online. Hi. Hi, everyone. <laughs> yes. Okay. Technically, this is our first time meeting. Okay. But we've met each other. We've seen, we've been together in a virtual vocal lesson or a class mm -hmm. that we were part of. And you just excelled there, I'll say. I did. I did. I, th I thought you did. <laughs> You did so well. Uh, you're, so you're doing so well. Eh? I'm glad that you continue to do this, what you're doing. You're in the music world. Mm -hmm. I'll say that. Yeah. Uh, let's go back to that song that we played in on the intro, uh, Better Days. I listened to it, you know, on Spotify. And yeah. it's something yeah. that I'm always blessed with. Like when I don't feel my best, Better Days is my mm -hmm. song. Better Days. Wow, okay. That's great. Here's yeah. here. Can you tell me the story behind that one? Um. That was written last year. Uh, I was talking to a friend. And we were in a small group. She was sharing to us about uh, how she was going through depression. And um, I personally have not, I don't think I have, maybe some uh, anxiety, but not but not clinical depression. And, and she was sharing about that and, and how it felt like a rabbit hole where, you know, you just take one step and it just sucks you in. And I wanted to write, speak life into, into what she was, into her as she was going through that. And, and that's how Better Days came about. I just wanted to um, point that out, that um, God is the light. Um, whatever rabbit hole we're in, if you could just find the strength to turn your face around and, you know, look at him and not that rabbit hole, not that darkness. Look into him. He is the light. And, you know, he's the only one who can really carry us out of that. And I wanted to talk about the, the ugly of it. So you can, if you can tell the lyrics in the beginning and even the verses, mm -hmm. it's a little ugly, but it, it is a fact. The chorus just comes in with that beat, like that wants to get you out of bed and dancing. So that's... Um, how the, the song came about and how I wanted it to feel like really get you out of out of bed out of the covers and just on your feet yeah right yeah and just in case for the viewers I'll be putting the link to the full song on the description below it's actually in her channel so I want you guys to go there for the full song yes, yes. I do want to hear about uh, your testimony tell me how you got to know the Lord um yeah, I grew up, uh, Philippines is a, a very religious country. And, you know, we've known about Jesus all our lives, you know, the, the, the family and Mary, Joseph and Jesus. And we've been taught about God um, ever since we were young. We, we know, um, we know, we have um, knowledge of, of who he is, but not um, so much knowledge enough to actually want us to um, have, pursue a relationship with him. And so with, with that knowledge, I, I was so afraid of God <laughs> um, before. He, he's like this, like the, like the most powerful person in the world. He can do anything at his, you know, at a, at a flick of a finger, he can get things done. But does he care about me? So that was mm. always been my, my, my relationship, how, how my relationship with God was before. Um, until I got to know him more personally, but after college, I was about, I was about 25. It was a long detour before that. I was, I was a very self-righteous person, very self-righteous religious person. I, I, I was a... I was actually a bully of Christians. Um, I had a friend uh, who, who rode with me in, in my car, and I would. I wouldn't have known. <laughs> oh, yeah, I know, I know. 
I just, you know, banter, <laughs> like friendly banter, but it, it, I knew he didn't mind. But when it came to know the Lord, I really reached out to him and, and told him, you know what, um, uh, the conversations we had actually had an impact. And now I'm really sorry for what I did. I, I came, <laughs> went back to him and I apologized for all I did. But that was it. Um, there was just this transaction between me and God when, when that happens, when finally you see how, how personal and how intimate God wants to be with us. And that was exactly what I was looking for because I, I detoured into Hinduism and right before that, almost became a Hindu nun actually, <laughs> sort of um, for, for a year of, of searching, um, just searching God because there was something I knew was lacking and there was something I was really searching for. Uh, it, it took a year or a little less than a year in, in, in Manila and I met so many people and, and, and just discovered so many things. But I think that was way, a way God was humbling me to seek Him outside what I perceived to be my self righteousness, to seek Him in His righteousness. And so when I came back to Cebu, it was the time when um, I got um, introduced to to Jesus more personally and uh, attended this church where um, I grew in, in my faith. That is wonderful, and I am I actually very much agree that. When it comes to finding satisfaction, it might sound cliche, but there's that that hole that only God can fill. And isn't it a joy to just come to know Jesus in at a personal level? Yeah. Let's talk about the musical side of you. So even when you were not a Christian yet, were you already doing things re- related to music? Yes. Uh, um, I guess my family, uh, me and my sisters, we, they sang. I, I'm more of a or the instrumentalist kind of person. Uh, I picked it up from my father because my father um, introduced us to playing the piano and um, playing the guitar uh, at a young age. I, I think I think we all, I don't know if, if every Asian family um, <laughs> sent their kids to piano, classical, classical yeah. piano lessons, right? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I have a piano right here and yeah. thank God I still somehow do it, but then like, not classical, but yeah. And so uh, that uh, high school, there, you know, if the bands started coming up, you started joining bands. So, I became a drummer, and, and in college, I became a drummer for new metal bands because I went to architecture school, and they're, they're mostly men there, or mostly guys there. Right. And so I was able to be vocalist of one. Um, I, they they took me in because I could rap. That was pretty much it. Wow. It wasn't about singing, but it was about my my rapping. That reminds me of KZ Tandingan. Ah, do you yeah. know her? Yeah. Oh yeah. Great. Oh, yeah. Okay, but rapping, that's the first time I've heard that. You're into rapping. Actually, uh, I did not write songs before, but I did poetry and I, I wrote poetry and rap back in high school. So those were the because I, I did not sing. Uh-huh. Um, I, I played drums. And then, so after college, I came to know the Lord and I was involved in a church. It wasn't right after that I, I, I joined the worship team. It took probably a year or two to serve in other ways until they, they saw that, um, I guess, your commitment to the church, I guess, that, that's more important than skill, commitment to God. And that's how I joined the, the worship team and as a drummer. And then at, at some point, our, there was one Sunday or two Sundays where there was very few people in church because it was like a vacation week or something, vacation two weeks. And no, there was no guitarist in church. So uh, I couldn't play the drums if, if there was no one else True. playing, right? That would be yeah. weird, just you and the, and the singer. Right. So I had to pick up the guitar and, and learn it for a week so I could accompany the, the worship leader that, that time. Yeah, I think I remember the first song that I ever learned on guitar. So I also have a guitar right here. You know, I try to learn. And I think the first song that I learned was Heart of Worship. Oh, oh. I just yeah. use like D-A-G-A. You know, the God. Yes. So, <laughs> that's right. Yeah. Right. So, thank God, because even just with three chords, you can play a song, yeah. lead worship. That's right. That's right. Um, in, in the conversation I had earlier with the other interview that I mentioned, yeah. she was saying that, uh, you know, you could know just a few chords, but if, if your heart really is into serving God, then, you know, God can use those few chords to minister to people. There's nothing God can, can't use. Yeah. And then it just goes from there. God willing, you would continue to develop your skill and you'd be yeah. able to express yourself even more. But yeah, yeah. even just three chords is just enough yeah. to right. serve and lead worship. True, true. And so, 
I guess from then, um, it was another week where there was absolutely no worship leader in church. And so that's when I, I had to step up and pick up the guitar. And it was a, probably like a few months after I picked up the guitar. There was no other guitar player too. So I had to learn to play and sing at the same time, which is not really that easy. It's not something that comes automatically. I think it, it takes practice to get the coordination. Yeah, I mean, it's kind of ironic because you play the drums and I feel like that's a, a, a whole body coordination type of thing. But yes. I under, I think I understand. Not no voice. That's yeah. right. Yeah. Well, look, you're doing it now. So oh, praise God for that. Yeah. And you mentioned a little bit already about the poetry. Okay, you started with poetry before. I'm guessing you have a, can we say it's natural or it's somewhere in your genes that you're able to write songs or write rather, you're good with words maybe. I, I would say, um, I think one thing that would really help somebody to be very good with words is if they read, right? They read right. a lot, which is yeah. unfortunately I don't, I don't do. <laughs> I don't read a lot. How do you do it, Mary? <laughs> I learn I learn English by watching TV. Oh, <laughs> it's probably not yeah. the best advice, but no, that's how I learned my English in a good school. It came from a good school. English uh, taught re really good English. I would say TV really taught me a lot in writing. Yeah, I mean, I have a friend whose kid speaks with a British accent, and she's oh. been living in the Philippines. So it's like I think that's about <laughs> take. I would like to go on and talk about the songwriting part. Uh, let's get into that. You mentioned poetry. How did you get into songwriting? Uh, uh, I guess in college, I probably wrote one or two or three or a few songs. But um, right when it came to know the Lord, um, I wanted to. I really wanted to write because I always was compelled by that verse. Um, sing a new song in the Psalms, right? Right. And that really bothered me that um, I could not sing my own song for him. And so... But I, I noticed that I could not write for 10 years. I actually could not write a song. I, I tried. I tried. I really did. But I could not get a song out together. About seven years ago, I was broke. <laughs> um, I was broken. I was broken. I was sick. I didn't even have money to ride a jeepney. You know how, how cheap jeepneys are here, right? But right. even that, I could not afford that. So I found myself walking and just talking to God and blaming him. I was, uh, probably thought I was, people thought I was probably crazy, so I had a cap on and I was like, sobbing my eyes out. I was walking, Aww. but um, uh, when that happened at first, uh, I, I was mad at God. But then the second time around, <laughs> that happened. I had a conversation with God that time, and when I had a conversation, it, it, like He was just assuring me that you know this is Him. This is I'm right in, in, in where He wants me to be. And though I knew that I had a pride um, problem for not asking help from people, but the second time that happened, I had so much peace, and God told me, you know, just look around what's happening around you mm -hmm. and as i was walking it was like he was filling me with words and actually a song came out so it was the first time i wrote um, a song and, and and that year too my pastor uh, volunteered me <laughs> to teach music to uh young girls who were rescued from prostitution and so i did that once a week and i was just trying to teach them to write songs also apart from teaching them guitar drums and and, and the keyboard for me to be able to encourage them to do that, I, I knew I had to be writing songs myself because right. then that would be such a, be a hypocritical um, suggestion, right? And so I, I had to write, I had to write to prove to them that I was writing. And I guess me helping them write their own songs and even just me teaching them music, it, it grew my heart as well as my skill. And I guess it's no book from there. God has been giving me different songs for them. I, even this song Maharlika was uh, I wrote for them. I guess now it's been um, seven years from that time. God still continues to give the songs. And so I guess, you know, it's all, all credit to him, really. Yeah, yeah. I actually love that song, too. And I'm uh, I'm not really into, sorry, but I am I was not into um, OPM. What's that again? Original mm -hmm. yes. Pinoy music? Filipino, Filipino music. Yeah. So I was yeah. not into it as yeah. much. I think in college I was, but then now, hmm. Not really, <laughs> sorry, but yeah. but then um, I'm coming to appreciate it more, especially indie. I think I mentioned that to you before, indie music, and it just shows that the creativity, especially in music with a message. That's the thing that I love about your music. Yours is music with a message. Let's go on to influences. So we mentioned this while we were chatting. And uh, yeah. Yeah, let's talk about uh, what are your influence in influences in music? You know, I, I, was, I was thinking about that. I always think about that because I don't have an exact answer to that. <laughs> um, but 
I do remember back when I was 12, um, I was introduced to Gary Vee mm, and course. his music. I wasn't a Christian then, but his, his music was something that uh, woke me up into, is there a God that wants to know me? You know, that was, that was like the first, like a, a seed planted. I bought his, um, <laughs> my mother bought me his, like a, like a cassette tape of, of him, you know, Shout for Joy. For people who know, yeah. Yeah, that was the old, um, the old MP3 mm. back then. But unfortunately, that, that, that was like a minus one. So I didn't even know how to sing his songs. I never really learned his songs. So I ended up just looking at the lyrics, even if I didn't know how to sing them. And, and that, that, that was like, wow, this is about God? For real, this is about God. And anyway, so fast forward. So he's my first um, influence, which I guess God just plays in my in my life to wake me up to Christian music, even if I uh, wasn't uh, in the faith then. Mm. Uh, other than that, Francis M. Oh yes. I guess in Tarap, that's the, the legend. And then in high school too, um, I actually heard of a band called Charts of Play. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They were played on the radio, which I didn't even know that the song Flood. I just loved it. Apparently, it was about Noah. I bought there. It was the first cassette tape that I bought for myself their album and the poetry and in their writing I studied it actually and and I guess it, it really influenced the way I wrote poetry back then but um, I felt there was, there was still something lacking that I was searching for and I guess intentionality especially in the delivery um, I, I guess after that in college uh, I didn't have the good influences I would say I probably will not mention the names of, of the band that that influenced me but it influenced the way I play the drums and I, the way I play the guitar a little more heavy heavy metal you know those those uh, those kinds and so when I was a Christian I listened to Sila I guess that was the band that I really listened to because I love the uh, the Congo songs that they were singing the Congolese songs that they were singing that they had such life in them and then I, got, I listened to Plum to some of Plum uh, you know Plum yes I, I, that's a good one too. yes yeah because I heard them on the radio even before I came to know the Lord so I, mean, I guess I find it really important for Christian songs to, to be on mainstream radio because that you never know who gets to hear them and who gets to, um, those are seeds planted in, in non-Christian hearts, you know, but ready, ready hearts. There may be ready hearts out there. I would say another influence of mine would, would be Mati I don't know if you know him. You know, it's it kind of rings a bell, but probably I'll ask my husband. He might be familiar. He's a when he came out, he was like this. Whoa! He stunned the world with like his. Um, I don't know what you call those curls, like a rabbi curls, mm. and he, he wore like a rabbi uh, dress. Mm. I think it looked like like a dress, and he was singing rap and reggae. Oh. So that was like wow. Yeah, so it was like, whoa, it's like really fresh music. I love the energy that he gives, all this passion. And that, that was, that is what resonates with me the most. And I guess you can tell with the way I write this yeah. little rap and delivery is a little reggae too. Yeah, sort I do notice song. that. I would say that I hear that influence in your music, which I, I never thought that I would really like reggae, but I do now. And, yeah. and, it was great timing because I love your music. Thank you. I'm glad it, it opened your eyes and your ears to appreciate other other kinds of music too. I'm glad that you touched on not just the Christian music or sometimes they say it's like music with Christian lyrics because the music itself is doesn't necessarily have to be Christian. It's the way you express, right? And uh, yeah. that comes into the conversation now. You mentioned both Christian and secular music. Do you have any boundaries? Let's say now that you're a Christian, do you still listen to secular? Do you still get influence from that? You're a write a songwriter and you listen to the the message of the song is there a way that you encourage yourself to not follow the teachings that the secular music yeah. is teaching you tell me about that uh, i do listen to um secular music or mm. secular music yeah i think with a mission to be able to see what language the people who do not know christ listen to and what what they can't understand so that when, when i do write music I, I will know what is effective in, in sharing the message of god i guess for me to protect myself i would say read read god's word the wisdom is there go to church listen to your teachers or your pastor's words join a small group the conversations there with prayer of course and uh, with the holy spirit will always kind of lead you to make the right decisions in life and i guess even just the songs that you listen to and how you receive them with the holy spirit and, and with a good community around you it's a good way to discern what is what is good and what is bad and how to apply all that in life and in music so 
the main thing that you encourage people to do is aside from listening to secular music, they really have to make sure that their spiritual life is in check, right? First, before anything else, I guess. Uh, that's very practical advice, not just for writing music, it's for any other yeah. influence we have, because we're always surrounded by these influences, yeah. but yeah. it's always how your spiritual health is, your personal time yeah. with God. Yeah, and, and if I may add, um, I, even the songs that we listen to, and even in the movies that we watch, know your boundaries, know your limits. If, if there's something that triggers a wrong um, reaction in your body, and you can feel it, it say you have struggle with a alcohol if it's something that you're introduced to or you're listening to or what that that makes you crave for it stay away from it if, if it's less that you're that you're struggling with then you know stay away from from the movies or the music that triggers that part of discerning really and, and, and how the holy spirit leads you obey you obey when, when, when that when that happens Thank you for that. I guess we can say that's one challenge when it comes to being a Christian artist, maybe. It could be the influence that we can get from outside the Christian world. Um, would you say there are, there are any other challenges when it comes to creating music? I guess for me, my biggest challenge, aside from the finances, I mean, it, it takes money to get music produced. Um, one thing that I had to was um, I don't have confidence in my music. And part of me you know, it tells me that that's good because I'll never rely on myself and always be relying on God. But I guess I always get rebuked, though, by people when they see how insecure I am. And I guess I do have to work on that to find my confidence and just how to present myself. I guess music-wise, I have a little more confidence, but it's, it's when I'm presenting myself, um, doing these interviews, uh, do, I don't know, for me, performing. I've never done a gig before, except for one time, which was two weeks ago, a live gig. And I hope, trusting that God will give me the right confidence and, and that it's not in myself, just in Him. Yeah, I'm sure you're going to grow from here. You keep on doing it. The Lord's just using you. And as long as you're willing, you're just going to keep on blessing people. I'm praying for you, my friend. Amen, amen. Yeah. Claiming that in Jesus' name. And uh, speaking of that, I know that you've you've been pretty busy lately. I mean, in a good way. Uh, so I know you started during the pandemic. Is that right? That's true. Before the pandemic, uh, probably had written 15 songs. Mm. And that's for a span of, let's say, five years. So that's not many, actually. It's probably like three a year. I, I didn't permit myself to write, actually. Only in special occasions. But when the pandemic came and somehow God gave me the freedom and the permission to probably written about this probably 45 more songs or 30 to 45 more songs something like that from then so i start start releasing music only in 2021 i, I did not see myself as a songwriter I, it was it was a term that i could not even call myself i feel like are you a songwriter uh, i was iffy about it um i write songs but i'm not not really a songwriter but that was, that was all i could say and especially even even calling myself an artist was something it took so long to uh, get over. And I guess God calls you to be this and that. And who can say no to that? And I guess even more for me, how can I say no to that? Yeah, It's amazing. You said that in the past you were self-righteous. And then now you're at a moment yes. where you're, you're having a hard time claiming, I'm a songwriter, I'm an artist, but... Of course, the Lord's working on that in your life. Okay, so what's your advice for people who, you know, they have the heart to make music. They have a heart to write songs, but they're not confident about it. Uh, what's your advice for them? Never stop writing. If, if there's anything you doubt, when, when any doubt comes in, and uh, I guess for me, this is what I say. Uh, keep writing. It's never, never wrong. You know, that, it's always right to write especially for God and, and, and his heart. Um, and I guess for me, because um, I'm not a theologian, and writing songs for me feels like I'm preparing a message for Sunday, sort of. Uh, so it, it gets me to, um, even if I'm writing a song that does not even mention the name of God, but uh, I want to be sure that the message that I'm writing about may not directly glorify him, but it has to be theologically whole, uh, not compromise. On the practical side, writing songs, it's like a, a language that you're learning. The more you do it, the more you become fluent at it. It's, it becomes an expression. So hone your craft by keep doing it. Just keep doing it until it becomes a second language to you or a third language if you have a second language. So I would say same for same goes for playing an instrument. Practice to a point where you can 
almost let it be your expression, let it be your language also. If, if you won't get the opportunities to master it really well, just don't be afraid to share it to your church. Don't be afraid to write songs and, and share them to people. Even if it's not the best song that you've written, because uh, writing songs is a journey of, of, of improvement and um, like mastery. Uh, just writing, just the process of writing and, 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 and you keep on writing is... is there's always, it's a journey of, of, of glory to glory, I uh, would say. So practice, practice. Okay, so. Yes. I mean, that's something that I, I'm, I'm a consumer of listening to great music with great messages. Well, never, you never know. Maybe I'm, I'm a person who talks a lot and uh, I'm not great with artistic words, but then, you know, uh, let's see. If I may add, you don't may not have you may not have like the best song out there, but um, I remember back uh, when when our radio station didn't upgrade yet into uh, they were just playing any any kind of song that was submitted to them. Okay. I remember back uh, was the song that I I was like thinking, why did they play this? It's not even done. I mean, you could tell because the drums kind of tripped somewhere, you know. Mm. Like, I, I was I was very critical about it. Um, about the quality and, and I thought the message was like uh, I was overly critical I think but then one time when I was so down and I was driving and I was so down that song actually ministered to me for some reason wow. it, I would say the quality wasn't but I was crying to the message of the song and you know I never disqualify any song uh, I remember a friend telling me that she's she's picky about the songs that she listens to and I tell her you know what I will never disqualify any song now that that has happened to me because God can use even that so powerfully to minister to one or two or ten or a hundred. Though I'm not saying put out bad quality songs, but I'm just saying that you don't don't shut your mouth. If God calls you to say something, don't don't shut your mouth. Don't don't, don't be a hindrance to the message being shared. Thank you. Thank you for that advice. And that's not just for me. That's for anyone watching. If you feel like, uh, I mean, you have the desire, but you feel like you don't have that gift of writing music i mean just go try it and as mary says practice make it your language and you never know how the lord's gonna work through you oh, yeah. yeah yeah absolutely okay i think at this point we can finally talk about your latest song i just uh, well i've been hearing it in other interviews that you've been you've been at mm. yeah i support mary okay but <laughs> thank you yeah, of course. And I know that the lyric video just came out. So can you talk about that one? The song is Fly. And uh, uh, back in, in January, uh, I met my best friend. Uh, you know, we went through the typhoon. We went through a lot of things. Uh, and uh, she uh, they've been praying for, for another sec a second baby. And I know that because uh, her daughter, who's like my best friend too, who's like my, my, biggest, my closest playmate, prays about that. So I've so been praying about that for years. And so when they lost the baby, I we're still in lockdown, so we didn't really get to visit each other. But she, she sent a picture. I think it was a picture of her daughter who was just um, crying so much when she learned that they had lost the baby. And um, I had time to process it. I was, I was in hospital visits because I, I, I got sick that time. And I just be able to sit down and feel their loss. It wasn't a loss that I thought I would ever feel, but I guess since I you know I love this family so much, it, it hit harder than I thought it would. And so writing that song, it's called Fly. It's, a, it's, it's like a lullaby to the baby that would have been. I guess my hope with the song is that it, it actually permits us to, to dream, to, to long, to what if, it, what if the baby would have been born, it would, it would have some of the could-haves, but um, allow us to do that in the process of grieving. And then uh, allow us to, to hope for the future. Uh, allow us to to let go and, and you know um they're in great hands better hands with god the, the song talks about how they're never set foot on this earth but the, the, the first time they will set foot is in, in, in god's presence and the moment they open their eyes they're going to be they're going to hear angels mm. um, whether that's going to happen i don't know if, you know those the theology doctrine you know they have questions about that uh, some people you know the debates about you know when that's going to happen but you know uh, us you know, just imagining that moment when the first time they will open their eyes it's going to be in the presence of, of god right not like us here when you know we open our eyes and it's the world that we see i hope that gives us comfort thinking that and knowing that 
that, that that is the heart of the song is just to really to give comfort to to moms and not just moms um, i wanted it to when, when, when i showed it to my best friend she said that i gave words that she was not able to express she, i guess there's a time when you actually permit yourself in the process of grieving where you allow yourself to to long also in the, in the process and so i gave her words to express that and not just for moms for dads too i mean you know we they go through the loss too and and the siblings and even the friends who grieve with the family i i, I felt a little um presumptuous when i wrote it because i'm not a mother myself yeah, i didn't experience the, the loss but mm-hmm. I, I don't know for some reason god gave me the heart to write it and so um i took on the, the mission and, and the heart to put it into words and i hope it really helps a lot of people with that by faith by faith people will be blessed by it and i'll be playing that after this part of the recording okay and yeah just listen to that I'd like to ask you, well, how can viewers find you or support you? I'm more than willing to accept you as a friend on Facebook. For sure, if you send me a, a friend request, uh, I'll accept you. But I also have a Facebook page for my music. And also, the same on Instagram, it's Mary Azarga Music. On YouTube, uh, I share released songs and also demos, which are like really rough demos. My handle there is Mary Azarga. And it's the same on all the music platforms, Spotify, Apple. Um, just search for my name, Mary Azarga, and you'll find my music there. And I hope, you know, with every listen, you, you're blessed. As I send them out with a prayer, really, and a, and a blessing that uh, it will touch your hearts and bring a message and, and just drive it deep, if, if not for anything. And I hope that, will, that, that it is what it does. And that's what I admire about you. I know that your heart is really to share these songs because of the message that they have. And um, I admire your heart for that. So everyone, go and check out her music. I am sure that you are going to get a message that will speak to your heart. And thank you so much, Mary, for being here. I will put those socials, the handles on the description so that you can check out her music. Thank you so much for having me. And I mean, it's an honor. Uh, uh, I never get to share, uh, uh, you know, this deep about the songs and, 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 the, and the journey. And so really thank you for this platform for being able to share um, just God and, uh, and all of this. Thank you, Lord. There you have it. If this has helped you in any way, like, consider subscribing, hit that bell, and check out other videos, which I'm sure will help encourage you in the faith. Our hope and future is in Jesus. See you in the next video.